Good morning. Welcome back to part 17, Losing the Boomer Blues. Fred opened the door and he found that it was both Bill and Judy. He called to Lucy, look who's here. Welcome, come on in, Lucy said with delight. Bill and Judy each had salt and pepper hair and neither looked a day over 50. Judy had traded in her French twist for long dreadlocks years ago and Bill sported a buzz cut that emphasized his handsome face. He was a squeezable teddy bear, and Judy was a flowery, free-spirited Aries. The guys took off for the backyard deck, while the ladies headed for Lucy's she shed, her counterpart to Fred's man cave. Lucy couldn't wait to show Judy her new painting. Women in Art was the next show at Expressions Art Gallery, and Lucy had been working on her entry for weeks. Walking up to the easel, Judy exclaimed, It's amazing. I'm sure there'll be a lot of great entries, but none as interesting as yours. I love it. I've spent hours laboring over it. I love it too. The canvas on her easel revealed her work entitled, The Day Will Come. It featured the outgoing Madam Speaker handing over the gavel to the new incoming Ma Ma Madam Speaker, as the newly elected president of the United States stood at the podium smiling. Fred and Bill were hammering away, repairing the deck. Lucy and Judy walked over to see how things were going. Well, exclaimed Judy, you've made great progress on the deck. It looks awesome. Lucy said, we're going inside now. Do you guys want anything to drink? Nothing for me, replied Fred. Bill responded, Give us another 30 minutes, and we'll join you inside. The ladies returned to the house and sat in the living room discussing their upcoming high school reunion. When Fred and Bill were done for the day, they joined their wives. Lucy asked, Are you guys almost done? Fred quickly answered, Yes, thanks to Bill. Bill responded, I guess it paid off being in construction for 30 years. Maybe tomorrow we'll polish it off, but I think we worked long enough for it today. We need to chill out. What do you say we head for the beach? Fred grabbed his guitar and said, yeah, we can kick back and strum some tunes under the stars. Hey, Lucy, call Bob and Jane, see if they want to join us. Sounds like fun, replied Lucy. She took out her cell phone and called Jane. After a brief conversation, she ended the call and said, They're on their way to Ocean Beach right now, Vamoose. Let's enjoy what's left of this beautiful night. When they arrived at Ocean Beach, Bob and Jane were waiting for them, sitting on their patchwork quilt in the sand with hot coffee and snacks for everyone. Jane had her harmonica, and Bob had brought his guitar too. Although the day had been chilly, the night was damp and windy. Despite the unpleasant weather, they made the best of it. The hot coffee and snacks warmed them up, and soon Bob and Fred had their guitars tuned up. Bob, Fred, and Jane started the night off with the old Beach Boys song, The Surfer Moon. After that, they sung, with a little help from my friends, and Lucy, Judy, and Bill joined in. Enjoying their time together, they continued singing old favorite tunes under the light of the full harvest moon. Chapter 9, August 4th, 2017. Grace's 88th birthday. It was a hot August morning in San Francisco. Warm temperatures out by the ocean were rare, but it was the end of summer and the entire Bay Area was sweltering. Mary and Jane arranged to meet at yesteryears. Grace took a cab down to Union Square to have her hair done and do some shopping. The coast was clear to decorate the shop in celebration of her 88th birthday. It was going to be a real surprise. After the small party, they'd be off to the clubhouse for lunch. They decorated the front of the shop and then sat at Grace's desk in the back preparing the gifts and writing out birthday cards. It wasn't easy to shop for Grace. She never dropped any hints, and as she put it, 
I have everything I need. Mary seemed to think a gift card would be the best bet. You can't go wrong with a gift card, Jane. Look at this cute card I found. Don't you just love pop-ups? Let's see. Wow, that's cool. Grace loves animals. I dig the vintage grandma cat with those old-fashioned granny glasses on. They sort of remind me of your sunglasses. Very funny, Jane. Don't start. I wrote something heartfelt for Grace on the birthday card. I composed a little poem for her last night. Knowing how much Mary loved to share her poems, Jane asked, Can I read it? Mary thought for a moment and then said, I'm no Maya Angelou, but I try. I'm just going to put it in the envelope and let Grace read it if you don't mind. I understand. Mary asked, what did you get, Grace? Well, I was in the same boat as you, so I had to do a little investigating. Since she enjoys reading the newspaper, I called the Chronicle and got her a year's subscription for daily delivery right to her door. Now she won't have to walk down to the smoke shop to buy her newspaper. I think she'll appreciate that. They placed the birthday gifts and cards on Grace's desk and returned to the front of the shop, where they sat in the corner away from the doorway, waiting for to surprise her. When she arrived, Mary and Jane could tell her trip to the Union Square had been a great one. Her hair looked marvelous, and she was carrying a shopping bag. As she walked into the shop, Mary and Jade, Jane yelled excitedly, Happy birthday! Heavens, what have you girls been up to? cried Grace. The shop looks like Party Central. Put the clothes sign in the window, Jane, and look what I bought for you, each of you. Mary asked, What? You aren't supposed to be buying us presents on your birthday, Grace. Who says? I couldn't resist these. She drew two beautiful silk scarves out of her shopping bag. Smiling brightly, she said, I thought you both could wear them for fun. These colorful scarves capture the psychedelic designs you girls liked when you were younger. She handed one to each of them. Oh my God, Grace, exclaimed Mary. It's beautiful. I'm wearing mine to the cliff house. I am too. I might even wear mine for our reunion. Thank you, Grace. But it's your birthday, replied Jane. Yes, it's my birthday. She giggled joyfully and exclaimed, 88 glorious years on this planet. Mary handed her the gifts she and Jane had wrapped and said, It was so sweet of you to remember us with gifts on your special day, but we have gifts for you too. Jane took her harmonica out of her pocket and began playing the Beatles' birthday as Grace started unwrapping her presents. After she opened them, she read her cards. Jane put her harmonica away and said, Gee, we all got gifts today. That's pretty cool. Mary walked up to Grace and asked, How do you like your presents? She replied, Mary, this poem is moving, and I'll put the gift card to good use, that's for sure. Jane, that subscription to the newspaper was so thoughtful. You girls mean so much to me. I don't want to get too emotional, but thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's getting late, and I'm hungry. We should hurry along. Grace locked up the shop. They got into Jane's car, and off they drove to the cliff house to celebrate Grace's birthday in style. Mary and Jane both wore their psychedelic scarves. Chapter 10 Joe and Mary spend the day in Santa Cruz. It was a beautiful sunny morning in the middle of August. Joe phoned Mary, asking if she would like to meet at his place for their trip to Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. He also invited her to spend the night. She was pleasantly surprised and quickly accepted his invitation. The drive would be enjoyable due to the glorious weather and since it was after 10 in the morning, the traffic would be light. After she had her overnight bag packed, she grabbed her shades and put them on. She had made it a habit to never leave home without them. It was a two-hour drive to Santa Cruz. We'll continue 